Alright everyone, just waiting for this to come up so I can go ahead and share it. I'll just wait I guess. Get started. Whoa. Oh, I don't actually need the sketch. My goodness, this is taking forever. Oh, I'm going to tap now. So I get 30 minutes of free music. My goodness, come on. Instead of talking about art today, I thought we'd talk about buffering. Thanks for Awesome. There we go. Got rid of that feedback. Go ahead and post this. Sorry, I've got my microphone in the way of where I usually have other things. Alright, bring up my reference. Yeah, I got the music playing outside of my desktop just because I wasn't too happy with the way that went last time. So, that nasty feedback I got. Downside is I won't see when people follow me. That's okay though. Thank you in advance if you do. If not, you're dead to me. No, I'm just kidding. Mm. Something I don't really care for too much about Mongo Studio is that there's not really an easy way to zoom and unzoom. Yeah, I know. My perspective sucks. I'm not going to talk a whole lot for this stream just because I found last time it was very difficult to concentrate and talk at the same time. So we'll be doing that. I'm trying to make this as comfortable for me as possible. So. typically find that I'm drawing much less detailed sketches and much more detailed ink drawings mm. I'm going to try to finish this page today, whether I stream me finishing it or not. Got some bacon in there. Yeah. I can see if I get a notification. This frying pan looks really dumb. 
I didn't use as much reference for it as I should have. But that's okay. It's just bacon. Nobody cares about bacon. Most of this is going to be painted in anyways. I think I have the advice of a friend that as long as you get the faces right most people will be okay with whatever you do to the rest of a person's anatomy so love me some hair some curls I like to jump around in different parts of the drawn because keeps me from getting bored Something about this pose feels really weird. And I don't know what it is. Eh. I was a lot more high strung on my last stream. This one, I just want to be done with this page. <laughs> I spent like a whole week on it. And I just need to be done. This is why I'm questioning whether I should continue doing comics or not. Because they just they take me so long. And I have been thinking about maybe doing a more simplified style for the next project. Because you can do a serious story in a very simple style. I mean, look at, like, Bone or Zot. I mean, those are pretty simple stories. Or simple styles. Pardon me. But, uh, you, you know, they're deep stories. With good characters. And, you know, I just don't think that you need to have a complex style. But at the same time... I mean, I want my stuff to look good and realistic, you know, detailed. So, there's kind of that conflict between... What I want it to look like, and what's practical. So, I don't know. Thank goodness I have such first world problems. Hmm, should I draw simple comics or complicated ones? Hmm, some people are like... Hmm, how am I going to eat tomorrow? I'm like, I'm like, what should I do for fun, guys? Jeez, I don't know. Life is tough. It's okay if you want to smack me. I want to smack me. I just, you know, kind of a fun little thing I've been thinking about. Those buttons are way too small. I don't know. It's really kind of stressing me out because... That's too heavy. It's really stressing me out because I always want to tell these great stories, and I guess some part of me is like, well, nobody's going to take it seriously if it doesn't look, you know, realistic, even though Kamaku style is not realistic, but whatever. You know. Ugh. So, I don't know. I had good advice from a friend uh, at my creative cabal meetings on Saturday morning. And he suggested that I just do this current project in uh, like uh, two issues or two volumes instead of a complete 60 page work. You know? Like that. I release it as two separate things and then I give it out slash sell it and see what the reaction is to it 
Let's see if people want to see more. And if I don't get much of a reaction, I can just switch to another project. So this is a lot easier than doing the sketches while I was streaming. That was terrible. It was very stressful for some reason. I don't know why. Even though I'm not super duper happy with this page, how it's going, I uh, I'm liking this experience a lot better than I did the uh, experience of drawing while streaming. So maybe I won't draw on stream anymore. I have to for my two-hour stream, but that I'm going to do on Saturday night. But I don't have to for this one. Poop. I drew where there's a bar. Poop, I say. Yeah, there we go. <laughs> I just love how I don't use any tools. I don't use perspective. And obviously it still looks amazing. Because I'm just that good. I probably should. But, you know, like I said, I'm having this weird dilemma. And it's making it really hard to... Not care, but... I don't know. I have some friends who are like, well, if you don't care about it, then you shouldn't do it. The spirit should be pure. Like, all right, man, whatever. So I don't know. I, mean, I don't know. Has anyone out there dealt with anything like this? But where you're like, I'm not sure if I should be doing this still. And it's not a skill thing because I know I'm not super, but I know that with dedication you can improve any skill. So if I wanted to get really good at this stuff, I could. I would just need to keep at it. That's not my problem. I'm not like, oh, I'm not good enough. The problem is, I don't know if I really have the time or if I want to spend the time. You know? Like, I like telling stories, and I like being visual, and I thought for a long time that those two things needed to be... needed to go together. Not needed to, but... I was like, why couldn't they go together? Because that would be just perfect. But now I don't know. I just don't know. Oh, Molly. Which all? Those eyebrows, though. I like girls with thick eyebrows, I guess. Girls with thin eyebrows need not apply. I should probably have a reference pulled up, but I'm trusting that I don't know what I'm doing. Where are you? There you are. to kind of like do this weird work around with my microphone so I can get to my buttons. Boy, I'm just like an old person. Back in my day when we streamed, we didn't have to... There we go. That looks great. One's got them sleepy eyes. She just woke up. Give her a break. It's hard to wake up sometimes, especially when you've been camping. Trust me, I know. I've been camping. Uh, yeah, okay. It looks super. It's the best thing I've ever done. Where's my music? I apologize. I like to chew ice. So you're going to hear that. Um, but I really don't care. My car, my rules. I also really like office jokes. Okay, so Molly's kind of like that. 
a little bit more mascara up here. So I don't know. I guess that weird dilemma thing. I have another dilemma, but it's not something I can talk about on here. This. this sounds like the same guy who did Perseus, which is my favorite, uh, like free, like royalty free song. I use it as my theme song, my personal theme song. That's how conceited I am. I have a theme song. It's mine. Although I would recommend that anybody get a theme song because holy cow, do you think you feel good? Think of how good you feel when you have your own theme song. Like just like put it on your phone. And then walk into like a room and just like play your theme song and just be like, Yeah, this is me. I wish you would stop telling me about stuff on Facebook. Maybe it's just because it's also a guy singing. I don't know. So yeah, I'm using Manga Studio and I'm using, as you can see, a vector layer to uh to uh, draw this. And this is, I think, one area where Manga Studio really shines. And that chin is really awkward. I'm going to have to come back to that because I don't know what I'm going to do about that. It'll just be cheap and covered up with hair. Who knows? Does anyone out there have that same dilemma I was talking about earlier where you're just not sure if something is kind of worth your time? I mean, and I can't, that's kind of premature to be like, oh, I don't know if I should be doing this because I never really, I did put a comic out there. Oh. But it's like, I don't know, I wasn't super happy with it anyway, so I kind of disregard it now from thinking about stuff. That was an articulate sentence. I just, it's kind of weird. So I'm doing. Our hand. <laughs> Song is dope. It's off the chain. There's a chain, and this song is off of it. Video game sound effects are popular in songs. That's the song, the sound from the uh, song. Buttons. She got buttons in her hat. What did they button and unbutton? Gotta read the comic to find out.
Yes, I used almost no reference for the hands. Believe it or not, that's just how good I am. She's munching on this old bacon. Her face just looks really weird to me. <laughs> Maybe I just won't draw her face here. There, they'll get it. People will understand. They'll understand that's supposed to be a face. Because I do. That is the big problem. <sighs> Sorry, I have arthritis. It's great, right? Being a, a hobbyist illustrator and having arthritis. I don't have arthritis. Well, at least I don't think it. I haven't been medically diagnosed. Oh, it feels so weird. I just, I don't like the way your face looks. Oh, dang it. See, I like that. Now that means I have to go and move the ear. <laughs> and I don't have the selection tool on my quick thing. That's fine. Yeah. Move you. Sure. Ooh, no, that is not good. Oh well. Looks better than it did. Crunch, 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 crunch. I don't know how to draw people eating, so it's like a stock photo where someone's almost biting a pizza, they're like or they're like, but they're not biting the pizza because, you know, the pizza's probably fake, to be honest. That's why I should title this uh, video Almost Biting Pizza. I should do it. And see, so this is also hard because she's kind of got her eyes kind of closed because she's tasting the deliciousness of the burnt bacon. So it kind of also doesn't look like her. I just have to rely on the fact that she has these weird droopy eyes. Mm. Mm. I think for them girls with those basset hound eyes though. You know what I'm saying? I'm sure that's offensive to someone in some way. I don't care though. Yeah, people's upper lips, inner tube lips. She just got like this messy, crazy hair. Cause she doesn't really take very good care of it. That's kind of part of her character. Is you know she's she's not the greatest at paying attention to things, and that's gets her into trouble sometimes, and that's exactly what happened here, is uh, she didn't pay attention to something that she should have. Although, to be fair, I, wanted, I don't think it probably would have changed the situation much. 
See, now I have to look at my own hand for reference. Okay, so she's just got like these two. The bacon's kind of got to continue. The bacon must go on. So I don't really like the way the eyes turned out on this last iteration, so... I don't know. So if I stopped doing comic art, what I was thinking was that I might do like um, pinups and stuff, or book cover illustrations. I don't know. I'm really into digital painting. I should probably do a couple of those. Um, it's just I'm on kind of a tight deadline to finish the rest of this uh, comic, or this half. And so I can't really. take the time to do much else. Yeah, that's good enough. Still looks quite weird, but you know, it looks better than it did in this sketch. I don't know. What would I charge for this in the Amazon store to download uh, a 30 page graphic novel in which I put this much time into it? I don't know. I don't know, 99 cents. I think that's pretty fair. It's not a magnum opus. You know. Uh, you know, it's pretty clear to anyone that my skill level is not super, but at the same time, you know, I did put a little bit of time into this. Onto this weird side view. I hate drawing people on the side. Water. I got orange juice on my Cintiq screen. Don't worry, I've got a protector. I love this. So I used to draw with a, uh, a glove, and I've seen some people do that. But you know, what changed the game for me was when I got a screen protector. Now they're kind of they're a little not expensive, but I mean compared to the cost of a tablet, they're not super cheap, but um, I think they're worth it because now I don't draw with a glove anymore because I'm not afraid of like smudging the screen or scratching or anything because I can't. I've got a screen protector on it, and it's I've gotten used to drawing kind of like you know with a un uncovered hand, so it's nice. I like it. And brows, though, and brows are looking on fleek. Isn't that what you kids say these days? You children! I love hair so much. It's my advice. Yeah, so again, I just kind of go through and do whatever section feels my fancy at the particular moment. That chin looks weird. Chin still looks weird, but hold on. She's got a big nose, but <laughs> again, I apparently also like that because all the characters I draw have just giant noses, and it's really strange. I must have a thing. I don't know.
How did that happen? Yeah, so something's not right here. I'm gonna have to fix that. Boom, no one will know. This one's gonna need some more work because I don't really know what I'm doing on this one. But the other thing is, if I switch to a simpler style, would horror still work? I mean, I, th I think it could. But it's just the problem is, I think comics that rely on a simple style, when they go with horror, they have to go like over the top. They have to go like blood and guts and stuff. And that's not what I want to do. Like, I feel like that's just. I don't want to open up a can of worms, but I feel like that's kind of like, not the easy way out, but it's kind of the way that most people do. And I mean, for the general horror audience, I think that's what they want. They want to see something that's going to shock them, like viscerally. But I want to go for a more like emotional shock, like a more like, oh, like a great horror movie to me would be a movie like The Road. I mean, the movie was so dark and so hopeless and like, that's what horror is. It's just like hopelessness. Or, you know, like questioning what you would do in the situation and finding out that maybe you're sort of a monster too. Like in this situation, we know what's happening to Molly probably about halfway through the comic. She doesn't, though. And it's pretty terrible <laughs> what's, what's going on. Um, but we have to look at, you know, would we do the same thing? Would we also not see it? Does she see it and she just want, doesn't want to acknowledge what's going on? So, I, I don't know. I mean, like, what do you guys think about horror? What works for you? I think it's hard to be genuinely scary without going the schlock route. Um, I'll tell you one of, the, well, one of the most hopeless books I've read recently was uh, Stephen King's Revival. And I didn't like it. Like, I felt like he... And here's what I like about King. Most of the time, and this isn't all the time, so I should have known better. I, I can't really be super mad because he does this occasionally. But most of the time, in his stories, the white wins out at the end. The red is defeated and the white wins out. You know, the the good magic wins at the end. But in Revival, I'm not going to ruin anything. It's not necessarily that the red wins. It, uh, something, I don't know. <laughs> Spoiler alert for Revival. Uh, it's not a very happy ending. Let's just say that. And it, it's not a happy ending in a way that is existentially depressing. Now, if you've read it, you know what I mean by that. By existentially depressing. Uh, but if you haven't, it's it's still an interesting read. Uh, I would just say it doesn't have sort of that candy coating. Hang on a second. I don't know what happened to my music. Oh well. It doesn't have a candy coating. So you're not going to walk away from that story saying, you know, oh, well at the end, you know, everything was right with the world. You know? It's just... I don't know. It, it almost felt like he wrote it like because he was angry. I don't know. <laughs> That's the best way I can describe it. Like it feels like a story that he wrote when he was angry. 
like at someone who believed the opposite of what the book kind of says, like the message. And I don't know. I wasn't offended by it because of the religious implications. I know some people would say that. But um, I was just kind of, I felt kind of weird after reading that book. Like, you know, uh, oh, and Harry Potter, the Dementors, how after you, you know, encounter them, you feel like you'll never be happy again. It was kind of that feeling. I was like, oh my gosh, this book is a Dementor. So, I don't know. Like I said, I'm not going to spoil anything. And it's really not, it's not that bad. I just, it was definitely not one of my favorite King stories. I mean, even even Dark Tower, which has a, I definitely won't spoil that, but definitely does not maybe necessarily have a super sunshine end. Uh, at least that story, it kind of felt right, you know? It felt like everybody kind of got what they deserved. Most people. I won't spoil anything. But it kind of felt like most people got what they deserved. And it just didn't feel like at the end of Revival everybody got what they deserved. I mean, I guess uh, Charlie did, but, you know, I just don't feel like... I mean, that's something that I've got... Like, that's a piece of storytelling advice I got from uh, a, a guy. I think it was called, like, Novel Writing for Dummies. And it's not a super-duper read. But uh, he said something in it that I've always tried to do. His fingers look kind of weird, but not too bad. Something that I've always tried to do, which is make sure that they, your characters don't have to have a good ending, but they have to have one that they deserve. So the audience has to feel like that character got the ending that was coming to them. And I just feel like in Revival, maybe that didn't happen. So, yeah, I don't know. I don't even remember how I got started talking about this. I guess I was just trying to say that most King stories, um, it, he didn't rely too much on, on you know, schlock and, you know, just like mountains of gore and... And his stories st were still great. And, you know, I think a reason why they were so, so great, and they still are, most of them, I mean, even Revival is still pretty good is because of the characters. He crafted believable, crazy sometimes, but interesting characters. So, and I think that's kind of undervalued in, uh, in content creation and story creation. You know, you gotta have characters that people care about. You gotta have interesting characters. Uh, because if you don't, then, I mean, you've got nothing. I mean, you got, you know, the next generic thriller that's going to be, you know, in the bargain bin by the end of the year. Or, the, you know, the next story where somebody knows what's going to happen. Like, um, I'm totally going to sh throw shade on Dean Koontz right now just because he doesn't know who I am and he'll never meet me. So, I don't care. King, same with King, but whatever. Dean Koontz, his stories are like, uh, I always know exactly what's going to, I've read a lot of them and that's my fault. I mean, like, they're not bad, but I know that he has a certain kind of characters that he likes to put in his stories. Like uh, he always he always has a dog, so there's always a dog. The guy loves dogs. He one of his books that he wrote is a uh, like a like an autobiography of one of his dogs, like as a nonfiction. Oh. So the dude loves dogs is my point, but. You know, um, and there's nothing wrong with that. I like dogs, uh, too. But, like, there's always a dog, and it's always, like, magical. It always, like, has some weird second sense, or, like, you can understand what the characters are saying, even if that's not what the book is about. It's like, come on. Dogs are not better than people. You can be mad at me if you want, but I'm going to say that. They are not better. They're not worse, that's for sure. But I don't think they're necess you know, necess necessarily better. I mean, I was looking at someone's bumper sticker the other day, and it was like something like, I'm a dog person because people suck. I'm like, okay, but I bet you're the kind of person that like calls your 
dog, you know, like your fur baby and stuff. But that's anthropomorphism. That's assigning human characteristics to an animal. Like, we're so fascinated by ourselves, by other humans, that we do that. Even though we're like, no, it's because dogs are better. It's like, but you're, you know, like, or, you know, you know, here's mommy and stuff. Like, you're not that creature's mom. You didn't carry it around. You didn't birth it. But it's anthropomorphism. I mean, animals as people, that's just so ingrained and like such an instinct across all cultures to give animals human characteristics. And it's because we love ourselves, whether we think we're, you know, people, people or not, whether we're like humankind sucks, we give animals and stuff, everybody does, we give them human characteristics and anthropomorphize creatures because we love ourselves so much it's it's amazing other animals don't do this of course other animals don't have the same intelligence with you and i will fight you on that i will fight you we have more intelligence than animals i'm sorry they don't have war they would if they were smart we were i guarantee it chimps well chimps have war you think uh primates don't have war they don't have that concept they don't have wars among their different tribes and stuff they do I'm not going to quote like a scientific article, but they do. Uh, you know, I'm sorry. That's, there's nothing like magically nicer about animals. Like if they could do the things we could do, they would. Why wouldn't they? We did. We started doing them. And, you know, we could, you know, some people think we started out as just simple, you know, primates ourselves. So I don't understand why other animals would be exempt from that. Like, if elephants got super intelligent, they would have war, they would have murder. Why wouldn't they? <laughs> There's nothing inherently different about humanity. Animal people suck. No, I love, I love uh, dogs. I do. I wish I could have a dog, actually. But uh, in my living situation right now, I can't. Ugh. But yeah, I, I like dogs. Cats not so much because I think cats are evil. Cats are the devil. <laughs> Follow and subscribe if you like if you like cats. Cause I sure don't. America. Uh, but yeah, I definitely think that uh, I definitely think that people put way too much stock in animals. I think. Uh, like I said, and I love, uh, I love dogs. Love me some dog. I just, I, that insults me. When people put down humans and the accomplishments we've made. We've done some terrible things. But we've also done some really nice things. And I think when people try to forget that, that's, you know, when they win. And who is they? Al-Qaeda. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. Oh, man. Nobody's in my chat calling me a racist against animals. Or anything. So I guess that's good. You you almost agree. That uh, animals aren't the greatest. I'm not saying that humans are. Trust me. <laughs> humans are not the greatest either. But uh, you can't you can't pretend that animals don't do anything bad. I think what it, like dolphins are. There's two other species that do murder for fun. I think it's dolphins, and I can't remember what the other one is. But they murder for fun. <laughs> like that is an insanely human trait. But animals do it. Now see, I like this about Clip Studio that when you flip the canvas, it stays where you are. It's not like Sketchbook where it like shoots you all the way on the other side of the canvas because you flipped it. Like, it knows what you're trying to do. I mean, if there was good symmetry support in Clip Studio, I would switch to doing my sketches in here, because it would be a lot easier than um, bringing them around. But the problem is, there's not really good like symmetry or anything in Clip Studio, and that's what I love about sketchbook right okay. in fact my uh, my uh, subscription is coming up to be renewed here soon I think next week 
I'm not going to renew it. I, I haven't found that any of the features are things that I actually use. You know? So, like, why would I... Why would I continue it? That's been fine. I have a sketchbook review on my YouTube channel. I'm actually going to watch it again myself because I just need a little reassurance that what I'm doing is the right thing. Yeah, I'm pretty sure it is. But I'll just I can still use it to sketch in. Just not, you know, a lot of stuff. I don't know. I think I might end this stream. I'm getting warm. This light is really warm. And yeah. I'm almost done inking, so I'm going to finish inking, paint, hopefully, I might be able to finish this today before I go to work. For me, for me we'll see. I'll be able to get a pretty decent amount done. I was supposed to have two pages done, but we'll see. So thanks guys for watching, and I've still got a little bit to go. Yeah, nothing too major though. Yeah, these weird poses. So I don't know. All right, guys. Uh, so thanks for watching. Thanks for hanging out with me and um, talking about animals and how much we love them. Gotta love them. Little, little fur babies. Uh, yeah. I'll stream again on Saturday. I'm going to stream again Friday. Uh, Friday. or Yeah, I'm going to stream again tomorrow for uh, on Facebook, though. So that'll be exclusive to Facebook. And then I'm going to stream Saturday night, but that'll be for the two-hour challenge that I have where I try to draw uh, and paint a character in two hours with a couple friends on, my, on uh, Facebook. And I'll probably be, I'll try to live stream that as well. So that should be fun. But um, all right, guys, thanks a lot. And I will see you guys later. So yeah, bye.